Oh, yeah. Welcome in, everybody. This is Cream of the Crop, a fantasy hockey podcast presented by Apples and Genos. You come for the apples, you stay for the Genos. You know this, all right? This is how we do. Uh, my name is Blake Creamer. I'm going to be your host today. Please follow me on Twitter slash X at Blake Creamer AG. Also get into the Apples and Genos Discord. Uh, link is in the description. You got to click on it. Get in there. We got lots of stuff going on. Uh, like-minded fantasy managers. You know the drill. Also, uh, you guys have been doing so awesome, really helping us out. And I'm going to continue my campaign here. Please rate the pod. Any rating will do. We really appreciate your time there. And that's helping us out big time. All right. But that's not why we're here. All right, I've got my brother in fantasy here with me today, Mike Rogerson of the Five Hole Fantasy Hockey Podcast to talk Yahoo ADP values and reaches. Mike, thank you for being here. You getting stoked for hockey or what, my man? Oh, it's so close. So, yeah, yeah really stoked. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Uh, it's just at this time of year, things just start kind of, uh, the momentum starts to get going, right? We got the young stars that is going on right now, which I've loved watching some of that stuff, especially the Canucks content. Mike, am I right? Yeah, yeah. And I love the uh, overly ambitious predictions we all make and how we're all experts right now. And nobody looks back at any of our predictions from last year, just like, you know. Yeah, this, that's right. this is the fun part. This is the funnest part is, try, is really trying to figure out who's going to do what. And uh, I, yep. it's uh, there is there is some science to it. And then, as you know, once the season starts, I mean, it's at least 25 percent luck for sure. I love it. I love watching these young stars, though, like Bedard, Fantilli. What the hell is going on with these men? Oh, damn. Like, I love stuff like that. Even just the Canucks, uh, the, the Canucks young stars, like you get guys like uh, Herose and, you know, McDonough coming out looking like all stars. Just like, yeah. All right. Are these guys going to make the team? Like, uh, I, I just love this time of year. It's uh, well, I mean, it's kind of feels like Bedard is a Canuck, right? Like, cause he is, he's literally from yep. <laughs> a couple minutes down the block from where we live. So I've, I know how good he is. And I made a bold prediction on one of uh, our previous <laughs> shows that he was going to get 90 points and I kind of got roasted for it. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's going to get a hundred points. But I, I legitimately think he, he can get in that range he's he's so good he is mcdavid lemieux gretzky good like he is different crosby he's in that realm i love it i love the young guys that are coming into the league this year like that calder race is going to be sick like there there's you know obviously it's not really a race it's a race for second place in yeah. my opinion as long as bedard is healthy but yeah it's it's exciting stuff but we'll get into it we'll talk about that stuff but uh in today's episode this is what we're going to be doing all right raj and i are going to be going round by round looking at players that are reaches uh in yahoo average draft position okay so we're going to go round by round players that are reaches meaning they will likely underperform at their current draft position and then values meaning that they're likely to smash that position right and outperform it um, we'll both kind of give our takes on that. So that's good. Um, I'm excited to get into this stuff as well, because to me, that's what really matters come draft time. Like I love these type of episodes when I was really getting into fantasy hockey at the start. These are the type of episodes that I really gravitated towards. Like where are the values? What are the reaches? Right. Um, you know, um, this is how we take advantage of, of the other fantasy managers in our leagues, right? Um, we can choose to wait on players a little bit, um, and we know uh, which players we want to likely avoid, right? And I don't know about you, Raj, but to me, nothing feels better than when you're in a draft and you start seeing guys that you think are overdrafted just going off the board at, at a really high, you know, at those high rounds. Then I'm just like, oh man, all my guys are going to be there. I love this. Like, I just love seeing guys like that go off the board. So that's sort of where we're at here. Um, you know, is this something that you normally do to prepare for your drafts, Raj? Yeah, I have a definite strategy I've noticed, which I thought was normal, but apparently uh, I have a few different takes at least I word things differently than some other people do. I think we probably all are doing the same thing, but um, I, uh, you know, I prepared a, a spreadsheet like I do every year, um, which I can share. Uh, we can throw it in the, in the show notes or something. I'll share a link to it. Um, but I like to look at um, the ADP from Yahoo and fan tracks. And then I also like to look at um, how everyone actually finished up last year. Like, something you know that's pretty important to take a look at and it's interesting to see like certain players like 
if they had a good year last year, their ADP is just through the roof this year. And then other guys had an amazing season and everyone's like, nope, you're going 150th, even though you scored 40 goals or whatever. So, yeah, I like to walk into a draft looking at all the players and by putting together a spreadsheet and organizing all the info, like it only took me like a day and a half. But now once I go into drafts, I won't have a plan. I'll have my sheet and I will have looked through literally every single player already. I don't like getting too attached to a plan because you're at the mercy of what 11 other people do. So keeping it fairly loose, even if you do have a plan, you know, that's fine. But just, you know, you got to keep that in mind. Like there's nothing worse than you watch two of your players go right before your pick. And then you're just like, well, that was my plan. Now, fuck you guys. And now you're flustered and, yeah, so it's it's good to keep it fluid, whatever your plan is. But mine is just that, like do a ton of research beforehand and then don't have a plan. Yeah, buddy, I, I so resonate with that because that's me as well. Like that's what I've been doing all summer. But when it comes to drafts, I'm kind of just like, let's see what comes at me, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, you've got to be fluid. And I think that you and I are very similar in that. Like I don't bring like a bunch of paper or any even real spreadsheets to my, you know, now that I've got my projections out, like I'll definitely have my projections, but that's probably it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, we, all, all the hard work is done, right? So and we're doing the hard work for you. You just listen to the pod and you get the information. All right. That's how we do. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to run down players from rounds one to 10. Uh, Raj and I will each talk about a value and a reach. Um, we're going to do our best to, I mean, we'll, we'll try and reference cats leagues uh, if, if it comes up right just as best we can. But um, we're just looking at the ADPs on Yahoo currently and, and what our thoughts are. All right. You ready to go, Raj? I'm ready. All right, let's get to biz. Okay, the first round. So uh, again, this is Yahoo. I do want to just say I'll probably do a, like a solo episode, uh, shorter episode, just on fan tracks as well. I find fan tracks is much more uh, realistic with the ADPs. Yahoo is nuts. And, you know, we're getting closer to the season and it's still kind of nuts. Like there are some insane values here that Raj and I'll definitely let you know about. But uh, yeah, we're going to start with Yahoo because I think that's where the real um, advantage can be gleaned. Right. So anyways, we'll go uh, round number one. Obviously, it's going to go make, uh, on Yahoo. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Pasternak at three, McKinnon at four, Matthew Kachuk at five, Austin Matthews at six, Kucherov seven, Jay Robertson at eight. I don't know why I said Jay Robertson. Uh, Mikko Ranton <laughs> at nine, and Brady Kachuk at 10, Tage Thompson at 11, and then Jack Hughes rounding it out uh, at pick number 12 on Yahoo. So, uh, Mike, what do you think in there? Who's your reach and who's your value in that first round? Uh, I, I find it hard to say much about this because actually this is one that I think Yahoo's got fairly right. Like whatever pick you are, this list isn't too far off. Like personally, I'd take Matthews before I would take Chuck because um, Matthews is obviously Matthews. He's going to score the most goals and he gets a ton of peripherals as well. So he might actually be a value if like in, in Yahoo he's got he's going averaging seventh right like 7.7 7. um but yeah other than that i mean i like this list i'm the one guy i think i'm a little hesitant on i'm cheering for big time but i'm hesitant on tage thompson he had such a great year i don't know if he can build on that yeah that makes total sense um like I, I do love the first round this year, though, just like yeah. you said. Like, um, and I really think, too, like, there's not really a bad pick in the first round. There's no real whiffs if you pick any of these guys. Like, no. But there are better decisions, right? Like, um, you know, to me, I, I totally agree with you. Austin Matthews at uh, six, I think. That's – I would say that's a value, but I think there's a bigger value in this round. But um, even – uh, my reach first off is Pasternak at three. And again, we're, we're in, in the first round, especially like the reach and the, the, the value it's, it's really small, right? Like we're talking semantics here, right? You take pasta at three, you're not hating that, that that's reasonable. Right. But yeah. to me, Pasternak over McKinnon, no, what, like, no, that doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of like the team environment there in Boston. And I think that Pasternak was at his ceiling last year. He might have a little bit more to go, but I mean, with, with the players that exited out of Boston, we all know this, right? Like, he's going to be relied on to do a lot more. Um, he doesn't have as many tools to work with. 
right? And I think he he just was redlining last year. He was going at a high clip. So I still mm. like past, Pasta in the top five, but not before McKinnon. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then Austin Matthews over Matthew Kachuk, I would agree with as well. But to me, the value is going to be Jack Hughes at 12. I think that he could go probably three picks earlier than that. Um, Tage Thompson over Jack Hughes? No. That, no. that makes no sense to me. What are we doing? Um, Tage Thompson, even in the first round, I, I think he's probably more of an early second, you know, mid second kind of guy. But again, you're still going to love if you pick up Tage Thompson, the, the, the potential, the ceiling, like, you know, and I think he was, Tage was a little bit injured at the end of last season. I don't think he was fully, fully himself. So I think that sort of hampered his actual production that he could have if he was healthy. But anyways, I'm digressing. So my reach is going to be pasta and, uh, my value is going to be Jack Hughes. I think I've got Jack Hughes for 112 points this season, right? At pick 12? What the hell? No. Yeah. No yeah, I think everyone, like I said, everyone in that round could be great, but I'm least confident in Tage Thompson. Uh, just as a reference, um, I've got fan tracks in front of me as well on this sheet. Austin Matthews was four overall in fan tracks, which is probably where I'd put him. Um, I'm just not 100% confident in Tage Thompson. I want him so badly. I want him to be this good. But 47 goals, that's yeah, that, that's great. <laughs> it, it's risky bisky. You know what I mean? I think that's probably the riskiest pick there. And at 11 on Yahoo, mm, that's not for me. You know, Although, like I said, if you get Tage Thompson, great. I, I think that's someone you can get or you should probably wait until the second round, right? Yeah. Um, in these first couple rounds, I don't know about you, Raj, but I like to be as safe as possible. And that might even be up to round like five. I want to yeah. get proven guys like – and Tage, sure, he had – he he's had a couple good seasons, one really good season. But I don't know. I, I – it's just, it's not quite enough for me, right? I want to see a little bit more. Um, so I don't know. That's where I'm at. What do you, what do you, what kind of strategy are you using in your first five rounds there, Raj? Um, well, as a quick strategy for the first five rounds, I'm usually going pretty safe and I'm just about exclusively going forwards. Right. Um, in all these, you know, like each year, like I was saying, I go through and do a, a big bunch of, looking at drafts and results and blah, blah, blah. And that's one thing I found is just holding off on D it's become a trend in the last two seasons for guys to draft some D really early. And it has not returned whatsoever for any of them. Like, um, and I see it coming up and this is why I'm so anxious to talk about the second round. Cause I've got a couple things to say with, uh, with some of these trends here that I do not like, like the second round that I'm looking at coming up, I'm very unhappy about <laughs> cool. Well, let's get into it. Let's get into this second round. Um, I did include goalies in this. I know your your spreadsheet doesn't have the goalies, but I got mm -hmm. goalies here in the second round. Just cool. from Yahoo, so we'll get into it. All right. Starting with the second round. Um, first pick of the second round goes Kale McCarr, Shesterkin next. Uh, first goalie off the board. Kaprasov, then Sorokin, Mitch Marner, Alex Ovechkin, Sidney Crosby, Vasilevsky, Jake Ottinger, William Nylander, Rupe Hintz, and Mika Zibanejad rounding out the second round. So, yeah, talk mm. to me about the second round and what you're thinking there, Mike. Well, I, you know, I said I like to focus on forwards, and then we start with a D and a goalie, yep. and then <laughs> another goalie, and then another goalie, and another goalie. So, yeah. um, you know, we're all at least – a, I'm a soft version of zero G, but I'm definitely not a G in the early second round kind of guy whatsoever. Um, so, so that's something I disagree with right there. And that takes out half of what's in Yahoo right now. Um, Kale McCarr is uh, the most overdrafted guy maybe in the history of fantasy. Like there's no doubt in my mind, he's probably the best defenseman in the NHL. But like last year in Yahoo, he was, you know, people were taking him in certain podcasts that you have to take him in like four or five overall, which is laughable. And then where does he end up? 89th best player last year. So right. how is that? Like, I don't care about potential. I don't care about could have and would have and per 60 and all that. At the end of the day, it's like, what did you actually contribute? And he was 89th. So <laughs> I don't. I don't like that. And he's injury prone. He's been injured every single season he's played. Um, and I, that's just a risk I'm not willing to take in the first couple of rounds. And I don't even like to take D this early. So 
pretty out there. Um, I like, I mean, the, the old standbys here, Ovechkin and Crosby sitting right smack dab in the second round. I like that. It's like, it's the least exciting thing you can do. And it's always, you know, like a hundred percent what you're going to get. Um, so I like those picks. Um, but yeah, obviously I, I, I can't do the goalies, even though these are all great goalies. Um, I can't do the defensemen, even though obviously I think McCarr is probably the best defenseman. Strategically, I don't see it being the best thing to do. Um, so, and there's people I'd take ahead of Kaprasov. Um, uh, I might as well finish in analyzing every single player, I guess, but Marner. Yeah, well, yeah go ahead. Marner, I like a lot. I love Marner, but he's a bit of a Henrik Sedin in that he's like assists. Mm -hmm. And in a categories league, he's not bad in, in the peripherals, but he's not enough to make a difference. So I think Marner, even there, he's great, but he's not overall great to be that early, right? So he has to be playing 100% to be that valuable, you know? Yep, makes total sense. Um, yeah, this is an interesting round. Uh, and I like, first off, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. You know, I'm all about the zero G this year. This is my first year. I'm really kind of leaning into it. But you know, we got four goalies here in the second round. No, all right, damn. Look, look at these beauties you could be getting instead of these goalies, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, and I, I like what you said about Makar. I don't really agree with it, um, but I think it's a really interesting take. And you've you've got some stuff to sort of back up. Um, you know, people that take defensemen early, like you've, you've got some kind of information on that. For me, I think them, I don't know. I like, I, I think that value over replacement is a thing and it, it is important. And Makar is obviously, you know, I agree with you. Oh, maybe overdrafted definitely in the first round, like last year, what the hell was that? I mean, you know, I listened to your pod. Uh, we talked about it on our pod, like fourth overall Kale Makar. What? No. That's no. insane. Like forwards get 120 points. Makar, if everything goes perfect, 90 points. Like that's that <laughs> that makes no sense, right? But Makar at the end of the first round or at 13 here, I like that value to me because he is clearly the best defenseman, and he was rated 89th overall because he only played 60 games. You know what I mean? Like that that makes a big difference. Um, sorry, go ahead. What do you got? I was just gonna say, but he's all he always gets injured, and that's just. Yeah it's been every year like yep. um so that's just something i'm not willing to risk especially on a defense i mean it's like the same reason malkin has never been a consistent first round pick like he is still his you know points per grain he's still amazing but he always misses time and it's it's the same sort of thing i'm just not and the 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 value difference between an elite forward in a middle of the pack forward is pretty huge, but the difference between an elite D and a middle of the pack D isn't nearly as big of a difference. So I'm, I'm more willing to put my money on like you right now, you could have Elias Pettersson. You could have, you know, a lot of great players. You could have Stutzel at Braden point, 50 goals or whatever, Stamkos, you know, these are guys that would Timo Meyer. I would way rather have, those kind of guys who you're like pretty darn certain are going to end up in the, t in the top end of the, of the league. McCarr at his best, isn't going to be in the top 15 value players, even if it's, he plays a full season. So yeah, uh, I just, I just don't like it. No, definitely in terms of points, I agree with you there. And I also agree, um, like, I think that value over replacement for McCarr, like, I think that um, the, middle of the pack defensemen have, have risen up a little bit right so like you know we mm -hmm. saw carlson get 100 points we saw montour get 70 points we saw heiskanen get 70 points like everybody's getting 70 points now right so that gap has closed a little bit with mccarr and the rest of the pack so i definitely agree with you there i still like mccarr at that value and i don't really draft for injuries especially a guy as young as mccarr like malkin's a little different and of course he goes out and plays 82 games last season but uh, i do like yeah. mccarr at 13 there i don't think it's a value but i don't think it's a reach either so my for me in the second round of the players that we mentioned um you know hints to me is maybe a, a bit of a reach at uh pick 26 i you know i love hints but i think i like that around later right and that said i mean yeah. i've drafted him for like herb 
projected him for like 86 points or something like that. So, I mean, you, you pick him there, you're going to like it, but I think there's more value to be had if you wait around on that, right? I think there's guys at this position that you can you can get at better value. And one of them is uh, Kirill Kaprasov. I'm, I'm actually kind of bullish on uh, Kaprasov this year. He's going at 15. Um, I've got him projected for 104 points. Um, they, so to me, I think he, he's a borderline first rounder. Like you could switch him and Tage really. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. you could put Kaprasov at 12 and Tage at, you know, 15. And that would make more sense to me. I think cap could sneak into the first round, uh, in terms of value at the end of the season, but you know, that, that's sort of where I'm at with that. I think I love Kaprasov as my second pick. Like if you, you know, if you're at pick 10 and then it comes back around and Kaprasov's still there, that's a freaking slam dunk. I mean, this guy could get 50 goals this year. I don't know. Talk to me about Kaprasov, Mike. Where, where do you, what do you think about him this year? I really like him. I would way rather have him than Makar. Uh, and I would trust him more than Tage Thompson to, uh, I think Tage Thompson's got just as high of a ceiling, but like I said, I'm just iffy and I don't like iffy and definitely not in the first two rounds. Um, so yeah, I, I do like Kaprasov. I think he's in the, in the hundred point range for sure. Um, so yeah, I do. I definitely like him. I and I just by my overall strategy would would prefer him above above Makar myself. Yeah, makes sense to me. So uh, let's move on. We'll go to round three, and I'll rip through these. All right. So first pick around three, Alexander Georgie, Georgiev, Linus Olmark, um, Elias Pettersson, Adam Fox, Braden Point, Tim Stutzla, Connor Hellebuck, um, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and then Steven Stamkos, Panarin. Timo Meyer and Connor Bedard rounding out the, the third round there. Oh my God. Um, Yahoo. There's a bunch of Yahoo's at Yahoo. Let's uh, let's just agree on that. But uh, Mike, talk to me about the third round and what you're thinking about reaches and values here. Well, you know, we got a couple more goalies and D. <laughs> I don't know. You know, to me, maybe, maybe third round is where I'd see Makar and Adam Fox going. Um, okay. So I don't. I'd maybe put Fox. I mean, I maybe put Makar in and around where Fox is, and then maybe put Fox at the end of this round because I think they are definitely elite level. But that's about where I would take my the most elite D to me personally. Um, man, I love that Stutz is going. If I can get Tim Stutzla in the third round, I am just I'm loving hockey all year long. <laughs> he's uh, he's good in every league. Um, we had another sports net interview with him, um, on 32 thoughts in the, in the off season here. And he's just like, he's one of those guys. You just like, as soon as you hear him talk, you're like, I want you to get a hundred points. <laughs> like, he's, he's a like, gamer. Hey, yeah. And he's dual eligible already. Ottawa looks stacked with players who are primed to play. Um, man. So I really like him. Um, he's going mid third round right now. I like that. Um, I just, I don't get what Elias Pedersen needs to do to get some respect, but going by, uh, in, um, the apples and Geno's experts league settings, Pedersen was the eighth most valuable player overall last year. And, uh, people are still taking him in the third round. I got in shit last year for taking him in the fifth round. People are like, Oh, connect guy. I was like, for the eighth most valuable player in the league, why am I still getting heckled here? So I think him in the third round is just a super, super value. He's another guy who's like sneakily, ton of blocks for a center, um, reasonable amount of hits. He's going to play all of the power play and Canucks have a great power play. So I like that. Um, Timo Meyer and Stamkos, I think they're right about where they should be. The one guy who I'm surprised is this low is Nugent Hopkins going at 32 overall. Um, I thought people would be freaking out about his hundred point season right? a little more. So I'm glad he's going. I put him even a little lower than this. Like late third round is good, but like I'd rather have Timo Meyer before I'd have uh, Nugent Hopkins personally. Yeah, absolutely, man. It, like, there's so much value to be had here. And I love what you said about Pedersen um, because I had him in a league last year too. Same, like fifth round. And I felt, yeah, I felt like maybe I was reaching a little bit. But, yeah, the guy just delivered. He had an amazing season. Like, 
Um, for me, obviously, again, the goalie's too high. Like, Georgiev in the third round, no. Olmark in the third round, hell no. Mm-hmm. Like, what are they doing over there? Like, it's like, it's just chasing performances, right? I mean, Georgiev, sure, maybe a third round goalie, like, in terms of value, if he does what he did last year, right? But still, like, you know, it's a volatile position, as we know. Mm-hmm. So, to me, uh, like, my real value is going to be Pedersen. I'm with you. Like, this, this is a no-brainer. Right. This guy has arrived like his his deployment is elite. Um, His IPP last year was top five in the league. Right. Which I expect to come down a little bit. But when it wasn't top five in the league, it was still in the 70 percent percentile. Right. Which is elite. Mm -hmm. Right. And his shooting percentage held like that was great. Um, So I I have Pedersen projected for 92 points. Mm -hmm. And I think that's conservative. Honestly, like I think. He could hit 100. And just again, as a reference, in fan tracks, his ADP is 12.9. So he's going a full, you know, he's going at the end of the first round in fan tracks. Yeah. I so. think, you know, Pedersen at 30 or whatever he is here, like, what you know, yeah, 30. That's, that's, a, that's a dunk. All right. That's a freaking layup. Like, no problem. Get Pedersen in the third round if you can. Um, so I think that's a big time value. I love what you said about Timmy Stutes too. And I, I had a conversation with Nate, uh, you know, a little while ago here about Timmy Stutes. Um, his fan tracks is 18 ADP, but his, his Yahoo is 31. So I love Timmy Stutes at 31. I don't really like him at 18. Love him at 31, though. Man, if yeah. he's the third pick on your team, bang. Like, I've got him for 88 points. And I think, you know, obviously he bangs. Like, he gives you that cross-category coverage, dual eligibility. Like, Stutzler's is going to be a beauty. His team situation is awesome. So I love that. Um, my reach here has got to be Bedard. Bedard at the end of the third round, no. That is major risky bisky. As much as I love the player, like, mm-hmm. I, I, and I projected him for 78, I think. Um and I think that's I think that's absolutely achievable. Like, you know, this guy is elite. He's got one of the best shots in the league already. Like as a as a you know, however old he is, 18 or 19, like damn. And this guy's mm-hmm. just a beauty. But I'm not wasting my draft capital on Connor Bedard in the third round when I can get guys like, you know, even guys that, that were coming up in the fourth round, like Tavares or Miller or Connor, you know, guys like that that are that are proven, right? Connor Bedard is walking into one of the worst situations in fantasy, right? With the Blackhawks. It sucks. Like, yeah. I mean, that's capping his ceiling to me. Yeah, I mean, I love him to death, and I do think he is as good as – the best ever, but the I think three years from now he's going to be an absolute top three or four pick overall. But I don't think so this year. Like I, I could see him get ninety. I fully believe that, but I could also see him getting seventy. So yeah. I'm I'm definitely and being a center, I I'd love to get him in the fifth round or something like that. But in, in the third, it's still too early to be taking total risks like that yeah a little too early for for big risks like that but beauty player i'm so stoked to watch this guy this year i yeah. love that they brought hall in i love that they brought Corey perry in um you know i think those are they're just insulating this guy with yeah. people that have that have won or or you know that have also with hall he's been a number one pick himself like you know i i think it's it's a great move it's it's not as bleak as it was when he first got drafted there it's like oh my god who the hell is he gonna play with like andreas athens see you like oh God, what the hell? So, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of attitude there between Perry and Hall, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, big time. I'm, I'm low-key. I like Corey Perry. I oh, know. yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, he just seems like a beauty. Such a little weasel, but such a fun yeah. guy to watch. And just, he's won. He's won at, at every level. So, I love that. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's move on to round four. We're cooking now. All right. Round four. First pick of round four on Yahoo. John Tavares. Then Brad Marchand. Eric Carlson going in round four. Rasmus Dallin goes next, Sebastian Ajo, JT Miller, Kyle Connor, Zach Hyman, UC Saros, Roman Yossi, Alex Tuck, and then rounding it out in round four, Jeremy Swayman? Huh? Oh, my God. All right, Raj, talk to me about round four. What's happening here? Oh, man, I don't know. I, I People are just going to get on me right away, but JT Miller in round four with that <laughs> right, right wing eligibility and center, he's another guy. He's... He's going to end up probably in the top 20 overall players at the end of the season when it's all said and done. So round four, I'm totally happy. If you could get Pedersen in round three and Miller in round four, 
I'll take it when people call me a homer because both of those guys are potential fantasy beauties, absolute beauties, right? And both dual eligible. Um, so really like that. Um, and it's on brand. Uh, I just can't see Carlson repeating anywhere near what he did last year. I mean, even in Pittsburgh, it's just that was such a freak thing. He is that good. Well, I mean, he was that good 10 years ago, but he just took such a crazy, crazy leap last year. Um, I guess round four, we're getting up there, but I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with him because, I mean, their power play is obviously stacked. Um, there's obviously Chris Letang, who's one of the best overall fantasy defensemen in the past. So that's a very interesting situation. That's part of why I don't really like Carlson. He'll, he'll no doubt be good. Um, but I don't know how great he can be because with Latang there, they might split up time and that hurts. Yeah. I also think it's the team situation, right? Like in San Jose last year, they, they didn't have anything to play for. They didn't care if Carlson played defense, like here's the keys, buddy, just go, go do stuff. Right. Like, and he did stuff right. And he can like a hundred points, man. It, I really think wow. that that was a product of kind of his team situation and that they didn't really have anything to play for. Right. But in Pittsburgh, they're trying to win. Their window is still open. Right. He's going to be needed to, you know, maybe stay home a little bit. Right. Uh, just, I mean, not stay home. He's not a stay at home defenseman, yeah. but you know, like just, you got to take it easy, my guy. And so that there's regression coming for sure. I think 70 points is pretty realistic for Carlson, but they they've got him before Rasmus Dalin. I don't agree with that. Oh no. Um, I think Darlene's situation is much more, I, I think he's got a higher ceiling at this point in, in his career than Eric Carlson does. Um, and he bangs more, right? So I like Darlene a lot better there. But for me, the, the real reach here in this round four is Zach Hyman. He's someone that I'm not super interested in, uh, not in round four anyway. I mean, obviously he's part of the vaunted power play there in Edmonton, but I mean, he wasn't a big part of it, right? Like he got 26 points. 26 power play points. That's great, right? Career high, clearly 15 power play goals. No problem. Um, but it's just, I don't know. It still just seems a little bit early for me. Um, you know, when there's other guys available, like in and around the area, even like Roman Yossi is, is my, is my value here. And he's available after Zach Hyman. No, that makes no sense to me. Um, like, I, I honestly don't have a great reason for putting Hyman as my as my reach besides the fact that it's round four and I just I think he was redlining I do think that Edmonton's power play regresses a little bit not hugely I think it could regress and still be the number one power play in the league yeah exactly. it was just so ridiculous last season and I think teams have had all summer to try and figure out how to manage this power play right they have you know a year's worth of film to to go over and to to try and figure out how to stop these guys right um and i think hyman's sort of just along for the ride with those guys um so and, and i also i'm not 100 percent sure that hyman's role on the power play is is like he's going to be there all season you know that may be a hot take but they have you know kane that can maybe go in there which he never gets any power play time so you know take take that with a grain of salt but that's that's where i'm at with zach hyman but to me the real value here roman yossi in the fourth round oh my god like and and this goes kind of in the face of what you're talking about raj but i like um this year i'm probably going to be targeting defensemen at, at the very least in the third round right and mm -hmm. um roman yossi to me is is a second late second early third round guy and i i think they have no other options there in nashville his he's he drives everything there everything goes through roman yossi i think he's good for 70 points probably more with um decent perifs he's a really good blocking defenseman plus he's amazing on the power play um and i do think nashville like they almost made the playoffs last year with the injuries that they had you, you got um, ryan o'reilly coming in there who's a decent power play performer himself he's not going to you know, blow your hair back or anything like that, but um, a full season of Philip Forsberg as well. And plus the development of the young guys there, Novak and Evangelista, Cody Glass, guys like that. I'm low key excited on, you know, just for sleepers, like at the end of your draft or waiver guys. But yeah, I just like Roman Yossi. I, and mm -hmm. in the fourth round, to me, that's a dunk. I don't know. What do you think about that? Oh, a hundred percent. This is a, this is a perfect example of why I would never, take a defenseman in the first couple of rounds because to me Yossi is elite like he's a hundred percent top three still 
Um, yep. If everybody is playing at their best, he is still vying for being number one. I don't think if all things are equal and realistic, I don't think Carlson finishes in the top five again. Um, so I would take, this. we're talking end around four, and there's an elite, to me, you could, you could argue he's one of the best. He was one of the top three. So uh, I definitely, if I saw him available at the end of the fourth round, I would take a D here. Because um, now we're talking, again, an elite, 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 top tier guy. I don't like using tiers necessarily, but right. if you were saying elite, he's definitely one of the best and you got him at the end of the fourth round. So I'm into that for sure. And I think like my overall strategy is I start looking for D around round five, but Roman Yossi is an outlier of a defenseman, right? So yeah. that's when you make, you know, exceptions to your, to your rules. So for sure. A uh, long-winded answer to say yes. I think he's a good value here. Um, My even guy. Though, yeah. <laughs> I but I think that. all the other D before this, I think I, I wouldn't take. I think it's still too early to risk on Carlson. I think Darlene's great, but Buffalo's bad. I, I'm famously against Darlene, um, and I just still think he's too much of a risk. Uh, but this is the first D where I think is in the right spot to me. This is where you're at. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think Yossi is the second best defenseman in the draft. That's my thought there. Mm -hmm. So to get him in the fourth round, yes, please. That sounds nice. All right, I'll take that to the bank. All right, let's move on. We're going to round five here, and uh, we want to talk about some of these defensemen that Raj are going to pick up in your in your leagues here. So mm -hmm. first off the board, uh, first pick of round five, Dougie Hamilton. Uh, Charlie McAvoy goes next. Then it's Jeff Skinner, Quinn Hughes. Matt Boldy goes after that. Um, Alexander Barkov, then Jack Eichel, Clayton Keller in the fifth round, Dylan Larkin, Carter Verhage, Alex Debrinkit, and it finishes up with Mark Stone. Hi, Mark. So, um, nice fifth play. round. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? Uh, okay, tell me about uh, your strategy here in the fifth round. Well, yeah, and this is where a lot of defensemen I, I like in, in this round for sure, and this is where I would normally. Be, uh, be looking to definitely at least have AD. And I would be happy. To me, with the choices that are here, Dougie Hamilton, McAvoy, Quinn Hughes, all three options on D are great, but depending on the league you're in. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in a league that values power play points and points more so, Quinn Hughes is your guy because um, his assist numbers are crazy. Like right now, his Super. career pace is like third all time. So if you're, you know, but some leagues are, have way more value on goals and less on assists, right? If it's that kind of league, he loses a lot of value. Um, so if points are more even, he's great. Power play points, Canucks get a, a ton of their points uh, on the power play. But then if it's a more uh, peripheral based league, McAvoy kicks ass, is going to get tons of minutes. Um, always comes through in that realm as long as he doesn't get injured again which he probably shouldn't and then dougie hamilton um if it comes down to things like shots and that he's just he's going to be pretty solid and jersey is so exciting yeah yeah they're one of my favorite teams probably my favorite team for fantasy this season like yeah. they've got an amazing schedule their top six is ridiculous and they got dougie big dougie on the back end plus their goalies are both going to be viable in my opinion um and and at a reasonable draft price as well so it's just it's just awesome there in Jersey. I love that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I agree with you on a lot of the stuff you said. If this is where you're taking your first defenseman, you got a great selection here, a really mm -hmm. great selection. So um, I can get behind that strategy for sure. Uh, if I didn't love Makar and Yossi so much and Dalin. So yeah, but I mean, like, what what if you got uh, what if your first two defensemen were Yossi and Dougie Hamilton or Yossi and Quinn Hughes? Like. That's yes. you're that's starting a with a couple yep. of elite guys right there, so that's that's, that's more a, that's where I fall into it. That's a big win for sure. Those are that's an amazing start for your defenseman. Um, so yeah, there are a couple surprises here. I think McAvoy in this round is a little bit high. Uh, that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, mm. but I do think McAvoy is going to have a better season uh, pace than he did last year, just because I think he he started injured obviously, and then 
when he got back, Lindholm was cooking, right? He was already flying, so he kind of just eased his way back into the lineup, and they didn't really need him to go all out. But I do think he's going to kind of take back the reins, uh, you know, power play one and be the guy, and Lindholm will kind of, you know, uh, head up that second unit. So that's my thought there, but um, my um, my value here is Barkov. Damn, yeah. Barkov at 58? Sheesh, yeah. this guy should be going, he could go in the second round. He could go late second round and I wouldn't bat an eye, right? Third round, still, third round is insane value to me. He, I've seen him in a lot of drafts that I've done uh, mid third round. Like as yeah. your third pick, you're getting Barkov. Like this guy has a hundred point potential, right? And Florida massively underachieved uh, last year in terms of their efficiency, right? And Barkov was no different, right? He had, um, his shooting percentage was, you know, a uh, 11% where um, his career average is 13.8. So he was under that. And the season before in Florida, 2021, he was 18%. So he regressed seven percentage points in one season, right? So I think that that's going to kind of come back to the mean. His deployment's insane. Obviously, you know, he's got some issues with injuries, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't draft that way. I think, you know, if you draft that way, you're missing out on, on seasons like Evgeny Malkin just had, even Crosby, like uh, guys playing full 82 that you don't expect, right? Carlson, right? You're missing out on those seasons. So I'd rather, especially in this round, it's not even a risk to take Barkov. It's a, it, it's no. just a lock, right? So even if he plays 68, he still was on a 94 point pace, he still has 78 points. So I love Barkov there. And my reach would be Mark Stone. Um, Mark Stone has no business in this round. Round five, no. Yeah, Especially no. with with the reports that come out about Stone, like he's going to be in and out of the lineup probably for the rest of his career due to injuries. Like, no, that's just a headache. You're just drafting a headache. Great player if he plays 82 games, but it's not going to happen, right? So I'd rather get someone a bit more consistent. No, I think you're right on all, all that. Like, I think Mark Stone is now, like, he's going to be more of, like, a, a big game player. Like, when we we really need to, to get the boys yeah. going, that's when he's going full bore. But he's too old right now. Um, there is a couple of things that I noticed here on fan tracks make a lot more sense. Like, on fan tracks, McAvoy is going at uh, 89 overall. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a lot more in line with where I like McAvoy. Unless, like I said, if it's a peripheral heavy league, he might go a little earlier. Um, yep. And then also uh, Barkov in fan tracks is going 28. So right about what you said in the third round there. So it seems like fan tracks, their, their ADP is a little more consistent with, with what I think uh, overall right now. So there's a few players that were right off the rails like yeah. uh, here. but um, And another guy, too, I think just kind of gets not talked about really. Or I haven't heard much about is Jack Eichel. Like I think if you're getting Jack Eichel in this round, I think that's great second center um i just think he's he's good <laughs> there's no two ways about it. he's just yep. good and i think his injury days are done so yeah i don't think we've seen full jack eichel yet you know what i mean like like what he's capable of obviously he's capable of winning the stanley cup oh my god um but uh you know we haven't seen his his I think he's 100% potential, and yeah, he's uh, he's good to go. That's a Stanley Cup winning team. I love uh, I love his outlook this season for sure. And at at 59, yeah, like you said, second center, love that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to round six. We're cooking. Um, all right, so first round, uh, first pick of round six is going to be Nico Heischer. Then Jake Gensel goes. Philip Gustafson next. Victor Hedman, see at the party. Victor Miro, the hero, Heiskinen. Then Josh Morrissey, Claude Giroux. Sergey Bobrovsky, then Jamie Ben in the sixth round. Chris Kreider, Jesper Bratt, and Evan Bouchard rounds it out. We got some interesting picks here. I want to get uh, your take on this, Mike. Oh, man, I love Nico Heischer here. Um, another great center, good all-round center. I mean, he's obviously second probably in, in, in Jersey. It depends, you know, what you want to call one and two, but they have two great lines there. So I think he's in fine shape and he's, he's a good all around center. Um, so if, uh, if he ends up your second center or God, if he was your third center, you're, you're strong up the middle. Gensel round six. That's crazy to me. Yeah, um, he's so, he's so good. Um, and I think Pittsburgh only looks a little better. Uh, if anything, right with the with uh, the addition of Carlson, offensively better. Anyways, Gensel's great. He's another guy who doesn't really get great respect because he's never 
he's never like totally, totally top of the league, but he's always like right below that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Hits a fair amount. But again, here, like you were talking about D, you could get Victor Hedman and Miro Heiskanen right here. So if you're not, if you didn't even pick a D until the uh, fifth round or fourth round, you could have like Yossi Quinn Hughes and Victor Hedman as your D. It's insane. So, I mean, I think your strategy really, really works on Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, like because exactly. of the these ADPs, it's insane, right? Yeah. Like exactly what you said. But I think Victor Hedman in the sixth round, yeah, he had a bummer season last year, which he was still great, right? Like, it was only a bummer because he was Victor Hedman, um, and we know how good he can be. But he was, like, right around the 100th overall player still yep. on his worst season of his career. So, yeah, I think getting a Victor Hedman, um, although, I mean, he's been going really late in Yahoo and even later in fan tracks. So people have lost hope in Victor Hedman, which I, I haven't. Yeah, I, exactly. That's value for us, right? Yeah. I, I love Victor Hedman this season because you can, I've seen him go in the seventh, eighth, ninth round, Victor Hedman. What? Yeah. That, that's insane. I'll take that all day. This is one of the best actual defensemen in the league. And he just had a down season, right? He was injured. Like he was, he had some injuries that he was playing through. Um, you know, obviously Sergachev, you know, kind of picked up his game and picked up the slack and started popping on the power play. But I think it's going to be Hedman's year. I think he's going to do a lot better. Um, for me in round six, yeah, I agree with those things you said. Um, the value for me is is Gensel big time. I think like this guy's a perennial second rounder. He has been for years. So I'm not saying take Gensel in the second round this year, but yeah. damn. Like, yeah, he's he's going to be injured to start the season, but I've read reports that he might only miss five games. Like, that's fine. Even if he misses 12 games, a 70-game uh, Gensel, like, in the sixth round, bang. He's a point-per-game mm -hmm. player with with awesome perifs. So um, I like that a lot. And I also think Bouchard, Evan Bouchard, at the end of round six, so pick 75, that's, that's, that's a very good pick there. Um, you know, it's a risky pick, Evan Bouchard, but not at 75. I think, yeah, like that feels good to me. Like he's he's quarterback in that power play. There's no question, right? So I think you're looking at probably a 60-point defenseman with your 75th overall pick. That's crazy. Yeah, I think it's fine there. I'm still – I think that's probably good there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been burned too much with Evan Bouchard, haven't well, you? Well, I haven't. I, TJ and Zach have been – They love him. They've, well, they've been waiting for him, and they have keep calling a breakout for him, and he just, just he's never had the opportunity. But this year he has a clear cut. You're the guy. There's not really any competition on power play-wise. So he should be good. But, like, as another example here, fan tracks, he's going 41st overall, which I think is also crazy. Um, <laughs> if you were interested in the Bouchard risk with a potential incredible reward, he's also a pretty good peripheral defenseman, too. Yep. He's no slouch. So Bouchard, he's probably going to be good value at six. A little bit of a risk, but the high end possibilities for him are just the highest, right? Like, yeah. This is where you can start taking swings. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just, and I don't even think that's a big swing. Like he he's locked into that power play. So who, who is going to take him off the power play unless they trade for somebody like they don't have anyone on roster. No, they've got like backups, like, you know, <laughs> maybe a backup where he can take yeah, a rest. First? If he, I mean, like, you know, what are they going to echo? No, those are the options. And yeah. those are not permanent solutions. Those are maybe like you need a couple periods off <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So there's no uh, real competition for him anymore. With Barry, there was always the comfortability of Barry, you know, leading the league in, in points when he when he was on that power play at one point. Yep. So there was always that threat. But now it's like, here you go. It's it's your time. And he's old enough now, too. He's had a little more experience and. Yeah. And uh, he doesn't look out of place. Like, it's not like he's just a placeholder there on the power no, play. He's doing good. stuff like look at the playoffs. Like that's, that's not a fluke to lead the entire playoffs and power play points in two rounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, he looked good out there. Um, so yeah, I, I really like the outlook there. And in round six, to me, it's, it's a no brainer for Evan Bouchard. Uh, my reach here would be Jamie Ben at 75. No, do not draft Jamie Ben at 75, please. All right. He's got yeah. a great floor. I, I do like Jamie Ben's floor now because he's a part of this Dallas power play. Um, but that's about it. Like, you know, he, he 78 points, Jamie Ben. He's not going to do that again. He shot a, um, a career high 17.4%. No, that's not happening. 
uh, you know, tied his career high power play points, 30. No, that's not happening again, right? I could see Jamie Ben getting 20 to 25 power play points and, you know, maybe a 60 point season max, right? So you don't draft a guy like that at 75 overall, but his floor is good, but, but wait for him, take him later. Yeah. It, when you're looking at Ben, like maybe cover up last year's stats. Cause that's not realistic yeah you know what i mean like he uh he was great last year um but that's kind of a little bit like how i feel about carlson it's like yes you once did that in the past that's we can't expect that to be something that happens like he was he was 49th most valuable player last year yeah yeah waiver wire pickup like, yeah but hell? Let's not kid ourselves here, right? Like, it's not happening again. No kidding. Thank you, JB, for your service. Uh, now get the hell out of my sight, all right? Um, but hopefully he stays on Power Play 1, and I think he'll be definitely a viable option again. Um, all right, let's keep it going. Round 7. Uh, first pick of round 7, Kevin Fiala. Then it goes Freddie Anderson. Tyler Toffoli goes next. Brandon Montour, Vitek Vanacek, Johnny Gaudreau. Ilya Samsonov, Andrei Svechnikov, Joe Pavelski, Brent Burns, Jared McCann, and rounding out round seven is Mo Cider. We're going to the old mill, and we're getting some cider. All right, what are you thinking, Raj? I'm not a fan of this round is what I'm yeah. thinking. Um, a player <laughs> I really like to get is Pavelski, but another guy I'd like to get a couple rounds later and have it be a great value. There's not just... He's a thousand years old. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really affect his style, right? Like his style is to go park in front of the net and deflect things in and take short shots and rebounds and yep. and all that kind of stuff. So his he doesn't need to be fast. His hands are amazing. So you know he's on a he's on a very 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 gradual decline in his career. He's not going to be like falling off a cliff anytime. So I would be fine with getting him here. I like I love guys who are center right wing. I love that. Yeah. You know, right wings are always a challenge, um, especially this year. Hey, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like there's way less. I was really excited about Columbus. I just uh, now it's all weird. Um, yeah. So I don't know about Goudreau. He could have an amazing season um, if they can hold their locker room together and everything. You just settle down and. And all that, um, but man, another guy, Brent, getting Brent Burns in the seventh round, to me, that's a nice value. Um, he's not the Brent Burns of old, but this is seventh round, and he still shoots. He's on Carolina, who's just always good. So I like him. Um, Montour could end up being good, but it's another guy where I'm not sure if he's going to be as good. Yeah. He will be good, but I don't know if he's going to be as good. You know what I mean? He might have had a bit of a peak last year. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he became the coach's guy and, and took the reins on power play one there. The issue with Montour is obviously the injury coming into the season. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was taking him much earlier, like in my fan tracks uh, drafts. You know, I was taking him in like the fifth round or the fourth round or sometimes even the third. Like this is before we found out that he was, you know, going to be injured at the start of the season. So I I'm a believer in Montour. I think he's a good shot generating defenseman. Like he's got some goals in the bag. And if he has the, the quarterback on power play one there in Florida, I could see him getting 65, 70 again, but yeah, he's injured. So that kind of takes him out of the race. So round seven seems like a good place for him, for me, um, for me, the value here. Um, I like Svechnikov Svechnikov in round seven, buddy. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. Like this yeah. is another guy like we, we haven't seen what he can do, right? I mean, you know, he, he's the first full season he ever played was his first ever season. And then it's all injuries after that, right? And he had a major injury last season again. So he was pacing for 70 points. This guy is a beefer. He, he hits like a truck. I love that. He's going to be power play one. His deployment was better last season. He, he was just over 18 minutes average time on ice. So obviously you've got the Rod Brindamore factor there in Carolina. That is always going to cap the ceiling of these guys. Um, anyone who's not named Aho. <laughs> but I think Sveshnikov could break through here. And to get him in the seventh round, oh, my God. Uh, and if it's in a Cats League seventh round, no. You're looking at Sveshnikov in the fourth or fifth round to me in a Cats League. Um, in a points league, I, I still think this is too late for him because I really do think there's a, a high ceiling for this player. He's only 23. It seems like he's been playing in the league forever, 
right? He's got five seasons yeah. under his belt, but he's only 23. Like this guy's, he's just coming into his own, you know, granted he is coming off a big injury, but I, I really like the value for Sveshnikov this season. Um, and for me, the reach here is going to be most cider. All right. Most cider at the end of round seven, obviously, you know, in a category league, I think most cider around seven, take it to the bank. No problem. This guy's a peripheral God. All right. He does that. But in terms of points, I'm not even sure he gets power play one this season, right? We got Goss Despair there in Detroit. We saw what they did last year with Hronik and Cider. I'm not saying that's going to happen again. Uh, you know, and this is a contract year for Cider, so he's, he's go out and prove 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 it time, right? But I don't know. I'm just I'm just not sure what to expect from Cider, and I'm not that high on Detroit this season, even with the brinket there. Like I like that top line, but. I don't know. Cider to me is kind of falling a little bit and to, to pick him up this early, like that's pick 87 and you've got some, some other guys like even in the next round that I like a hell of a lot better than most cider in terms of fantasy. I don't know where you at with cider this year. Yeah, I'm similar. If it again, categories league, I'm, I'm fine with him here actually. Cause he's definitely going to do that stuff, but yep. um, I'm not reaching for cider anymore. I'd rather have, you know, I'd way rather have Brent Burns, who's right here with yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm with you. I like Svechnikov a lot. Um, and, uh, yeah, beyond that, I mean, Fiala could be decent, but it, I'm not, he's not someone I like. I just don't like any risk involved there. He should be amazing, might not be. Um, but, yeah, that, that's, I've McCann's another guy in this round as far as Yahoo goes, which I think is just no. Definitely, yeah. I mean, there's no, no Seattle for me this early. Thanks. Yeah, that's that's a spare. That's a team of spare parts there. Even McCann, although well, I, like, they're going to change their name to the Seattle Streamers because yeah. they <laughs> are streamers, right? They're, I love <laughs> it. Uh, yeah, there's to me, it's so hard to value. Like doing my projections, um, I, I couldn't. It, it was it was like a crapshoot. It was like I, I don't know even what to do. Like they all redlined at at even strength efficiency. Like their shooting percentage was ridiculous. McCann included. Right. So, I mean, I think if he gets more minutes, then we can see maybe the same type of season from McCann. But he, he only he was getting like just over 16 minutes average time on ice. That's bizarre. That's bizarre. Uh, He's the best player. Yeah. I don't know. We he didn't even make the Canucks. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, there you go. If you can't make the Canucks. I mean, come on, buddy. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Not so. Uh, yeah, there you go. All right, let's move on to round eight. We got some beauties in here. Uh, first pick around eight in Yahoo. Uh, this is pick 87. It's Mikhail Sergachev, then Adrian Kempe. Jonas Carposalo goes next. Devin Levi, a risky bisky. Uh, John Carlson, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Evgeny Malkin, Tristan Jari, Drake Batherson, Marc-Andre Fleury, Thatcher Demko, and Stuart Skinner. Okay, what do you think in here? Yeah, what do you think in here in round, uh, round eight, Mike? There's some great 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 value here like this whole round is almost value except devon levi ahead of thatcher demko are you kidding and corpus Allo, no come Ow. on come on um so i mean i'll start there this is this is where i'm going demko um he's a goalie i would reach in inside the top 10 for i do I, I'll, I'll take demko and in the eighth, uh, he's a bulk player. Like he's going to get so much volume in Vancouver this year, and we should be better. So at the very least, he's going to. If you, your league has saves, he's going to have a ton of saves. Um, he usually has a pretty high save percentage, not last year notwithstanding. Um, so I like Demko here as as my goalie, but everybody in the world knows that, so that's not news. Malkin, like we were saying at this point, like technically he's the, he had the 52, 52nd best season last year. So yeah. if you're yeah. getting him this late in the game, I think that's totally, totally great. Um, you know, some, some injury risk, but he's also learned how to not get injured now, right? He's older and wiser and he didn't, I think he played a full 82 last year, maybe. Um, he's played more in recent years than in the, his, his old days. Uh, but John Carlson. In the eighth round. How? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, he is still definitely a top 10 defenseman, and and he's going to be on the power play with Ovechkin. So that is always the thing. That's always going to be about the same amount of production, as long as it's Carlson 
and Ovechkin, those numbers are pretty <laughs> intact, right? The rest of the players don't have much say in the matter as far as what's going to happen with those two guys. So I definitely love John Carlson. I mean, in fan tracks, again, he's going at 45th overall. So I think it seems like there's a lot of the Yahoo numbers or a certain amount of the Yahoo numbers here seem to be either auto draft or people just seeing what's coming up is in terms of value you know if you're just watching you know who's the next best player or best available player because that ranks by last year's results so guys like carlson who missed half of a season or whatever even more maybe they uh they don't show up on those lists right if you sort it by overall results from last year yep. you'll miss guys like carlson that's probably what's happening here um because that's that to me that's Correct me if I'm wrong, but that seems out of this world to me. Oh, it's freaking nuts. I mean, like, that's that's why I like playing leagues on Yahoo, though. Because, damn, like, you know, if you want to just look and, and kind of double check things, like, I would, you know, use uh, Mike's spreadsheet and look at the ADPs from Yahoo and then look at Fantrax and then see where the players should be valued. Because mm-hmm. I think Fantrax is like much more on the level. You got much more engaged people. I think too, the mock drafts you do on Fantrax, you have to kind of schedule them, right? If if you're doing mock drafts on Yahoo, it's kind of just click it. Yeah. And then, oh, you forgot and you just left it, right? So you get a lot of auto drafts. You get a lot of people yeah. leaving in the middle of the drafts. And like you said, players that were injured last season, they're ranked so low. Like that's the only possible response to having john carlson at this at this late like that makes no sense right so um that's that's why i like playing on yahoo right there's much more value to be had that's why we're talking about yahoo adps yeah and just uh just uh while we're talking about the difference between the two when you're looking at fan tracks something to keep in mind is fan tracks is a bit more of a nerd site like there's way more uh variability way more um stats that you can look at and and stuff like that so it tends to be more active people and it also includes a lot of um, dynasty leagues on fan tracks so you will see sometimes rookies being overvalued on fan tracks so it is definitely good to look at both because there's distinct difference in the two different uh adps yep yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, again, Mike's spreadsheet, uh, I'll make that available um, in the description here. So you can click on that and check it out. It's just a great tool for you to use. So thank you, Mike, for your service. Um, okay, so uh, obviously, we've talked about John Carlson, he's the value here, there's no question. Um, but to me, the reach is is probably some of these goalies, right? Not Demko, because uh, I, I agree with you, I would take a swing at Demko here in round eight. And I do zero G, right? But Demko mm-hmm. to me, I am high on him. I think you can get him later. I don't think Demko's even going in I, I, I've taken Demko twice already in some best ball leagues a- after round 10. And I feel amazing about it. It's ridiculous. Like there's no one come Spencer Martin. No, go fill up the water bottles. My man, get the hell out of my <laughs> sight. No, I mean, Demko's going to be, he'll play 82 games next season. I don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I love Demko and I love the outlook on the Canucks this year. I do that. All right. And Mike is with me on this. I know that. Um, but yeah, so Carlson's the value, the reach to me, uh, of those goalies too. I mean, Devin Levi, sure. I mean, his ceiling could be high, so I'll, I'll give that a pass. Um, to me, it's Mark andre Fleury. Why the hell would you be drafting Mark andre Fleury in round eight? It, it doesn't make sense. Um, you know, he lost – like, the starting role, I think, is gone for him. I, it's going to be Gustafson. And granted, it's – it's going to be a 1A, 1B situation. I think this season coming up, Mark andre Fleury is still viable. He's still a viable goalie that you can um, that you can have, right? But I think you can get him with your very last pick. That's when you should be taking Mark andre yeah. Fleury. Not, not in the eighth round, buddy. No. Yeah, um, it makes no sense. So that's that's kind of where I'm at with the reach there. I don't know. What do you think about the goaltending situation? In, in this I'm just staying away from it. Um, no Gustafson? Oh, come on. No, I'm, I don't. I don't. I don't want it. Like, I don't want to <laughs> expect that Flurry is going to be the number one guy. I don't want anything to do with, um, like, a middle-of-the-road team like Minnesota with a split situation. You're, like, half of average is what you end up with, right? So I'm not, I'm not into it. Like, the, he, the difference with Demko is he's, like, going to be, like, 90%. Like, he's going to be an old-school workhorse this year. I bet he yep. plays like 75% of the games and uh, racks up numbers at least. So Flurry is definitely not going to rack up big numbers. And Minnesota yeah. is not going to challenge for the top of the league 
um, as a team. Yeah, so I, I think Minnesota's sneaky good. Like they played, yeah. they played well last year. I mean, I'm, sure. like they're going to be a playoff team. Sure. Uh, and, and I like Gustafson for his rate, his rate stats. Right. You got your your save percentage, your goals against. I think Gustafson's gonna he's gonna do great there. But for your volume stats, no Minnesota goalie is really gonna no. give you what you need. Right. No. And like for me, one thing I like to do, I mean, obviously like Demko because I love the player and the team, but I like the volume and then I can wait super long on my next goalie if I want. And even with a guy who's getting a steady deployment as Demko, you can very easily cycle out your second goalie. But if you have somebody more like a flurry or who's getting a, a Splitsky situation like that, then you need to kind of have two, another goalie who's going to play some, right? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thought, like just in terms of drafting goalies, like maybe like I, I was on, uh, on Twitter slash X the other day, just talking about punting. Right. And mm -hmm. um, maybe in terms of goalies, like, what do you think about punting kind of those rate stats, like goals against and save percentage and just get volume starters? Like, I'm not talking about Demko because I think his rate stats could be decent as well, but like maybe punting those like goals against and save percentage um, and just going for shots and or saves and wins. Like, what, what do you think about that? Do you, do you ever kind of use that when you're drafting goalies? Yes, very much so. I, the, and, I I don't overvalue goalie stats most of the time. Um, but yeah, I think something like if I, again, I just got to use my guy. And, and if I use Demko as an example, the Canucks will get some wins, but I can guarantee you he's going to get a ton of volume, barring an injury, which you can just never bank on, right? But barring that, he's going to get a ton of shots against and probably have a fairly good percentage probably because of the volume end up with a lot of wins. Um, his winning percentage might not be amazing, but he's going to get a lot of wins yep. in numbers. So I like it because you can bank on those things with a couple of goalies. So yep. that's that's one situation where I can get a guy I like, but I can guarantee you the, that one thing. So I build my strategy from there. If I didn't yep. get Demko, I couldn't build that same strategy with almost any other goalie really, right? Yeah, no, I like that. Uh, it's just just even hearing it out loud, like it, it's something that I think I do naturally, but just saying it out loud, I'm like, yeah, like volume starters too. I think they're easier to get later on too. Like mm -hmm. obviously, I want to get a good one, right? But um, you know, you can get guys like Carl the, the vegetable lasagna. You can get Carl Vamelka, <laughs> right? You can get um, even Billy Huso. Like these guys are going to be volume starters. Bennington, right? They suck, but you know they're gonna they're gonna get you those those stats, right? So yeah, um, I, I do like that. Like so, just in terms of punting, like ah, forget about the goals against, forget about the save percentage. I'm just gonna get some some you know saves and wins and and hope for the best. Well, and the other thing too uh, that it does, whether it's better or not. It's is definitely debatable. It's not significantly better or significantly worse. Is if you have volume starters as goalies, um, then you can use a lot more of your pickups, adds, drops for scoring. Hmm. Right. Um, if you're not trying to make goalie minimums, which is something I like, I like to have as little to do with my goalies as possible. I love to get two volume starters and just hope for the best from there on out. Uh, well, if that's possible. not zero G, Raj. What what is happening here? That that's two G. All right. I don't know if I. Well, I, you know, it can still be like you can still get guys late, right? Like I'll take a, a Demko in the eighth, ninth, or tenth, and then find a maybe a Bennington or something. That's yep. not cool, but at least then I'm like, shit. I'm gonna make my goalie minimums every week. They're both on decent teams. Gonna get some wins. Yep. Both gonna go on streaks at times. I won't be able to predict. Yeah, and uh, if somebody super hot comes along out of nowhere, like somebody inevitably does, then maybe I'll go snag them. But yeah, I I hate having to be on top of goalies every week. I just yeah, I don't like it. That was my issue with zero G last year. I was like, oh, I don't. It's too stressful. But you know, I, towards the end of the year, I started doing it, and it 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 felt pretty good. And and Nate and I just did an episode about um, zero G and just talking about goalies, uh, just in the apples and genos pod here. And, um, yeah, I, I just like what he had to say. It, it's, um, like thinking about when you draft the goalie, not for season long value, but, or not thinking of our goalies as season long, 
like, and that's what's so good about zero G you get them later, then you're, you're more inclined to just be like, see you later. Right. And then you pick up the next hot goalie and you should always be kind of evaluating and doing that. So that said, I mean, I'm not dropping Demko unless he plays, unless he repeats last season. Yeah, no. And I think it's, it's one of those situations where if you're going to do zero G, then you should do it. And that's what you have to be aware of. You can't just draft shitty goalies and then have shitty goalies. You have to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dra- draft shitty goalies and then be on top of whoever's hot and available. And the only thing I don't like about that is there's a bunch of people doing that. So you have to hope that you get the hot next guy otherwise if you have half of your league playing zero g then all of a sudden that strategy is a little trickier yep no that's so true all right we digressed but it's a nice conversation i i I like talking about goalies because yeah Yeah. i'm just kind of figuring it out here but uh let's go we got a couple more rounds then we're going to talk about some some adp values in the later rounds so thank you for sticking with us here all right let's talk about round nine First pick around nine, Vince Dunn. Then it goes Darcy Kemper, Jordan Cairo, taking a gander at Evander Kane. Then it's the Zucchini man, Matt Zuccarello, Jonathan Marcheseau, Devin Taves, Tyson Berry, Darnell Nurse, Travis Konechny, Big Kuzi, Andre Kuzmenko, and then rounding out around nine is Noah Dobson. Okay, give me your values. Give me your reaches. What are you thinking here? Well, Tyson Berry, no thanks. Um, that's one I will say, I think this is way too early. I do think he's, well, he's a power play defenseman playing behind Roman Yossi. So yep. <laughs> take him if you want. He was fine that one season in Colorado and that one season <laughs> in Edmonton. And other than yep. that, he's yep. been subpar. Uh, so I don't like him there at all. I don't like, I don't even think he should be drafted to be honest. He should be a streamer at the very best and I wouldn't even stream him. Um, Vince Dunn, I think it's a bit early. He was fantastic last year. I just don't know if I'm confident enough that he's this good. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little hesitant on him here. Marcia. So, and I'm always after Marcia. So in round nine or 10, he's just Mr. Dependable. He does everything. He's great. He's right wing. Vegas is great. So I I love it. Just won the con Smythe. Like yes, I, sir. I think there's, there's a little like his ceiling raised just a little bit too, yeah, um, because of his like consistency on that top line. I, I like it, I, and the whole team is more consistent this year because of everything with Eichel and just their. I mean, even their goalies have been they've been through like four All Star goalies in the last like three years, right? Like they keep having these guys leave or get injured, and then like Logan Thompson, this rookie, comes along and he's yeah. incredible, and then Aiden Hill comes in, he's hot as hell, and blah 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 blah. And now it doesn't it just crush you, Raj? That we've been suffering since 1970, and these guys come out and win the Stanley Cup, Vegas. Oh my God! Like how? Yeah. I can't say I'm surprised. I can't say I'm surprised. But um, then, I mean, in this round too, Kane, I like. Yeah. I think uh, he should be very good value here this year. Always a potential to get suspended. Always a potential to get injured or sued or in jail or something. Generally speaking, this should be a great place uh, to get him. And then... um, I'm happy with Konechny in the ninth too, actually. I think he's going to have a decent season. And he's a, he's a good all-round player. Philly is bad, but I think they will have a decent power play, uh, to be honest. Um, and then, I don't know, I, I'm... Kuzmenko is tough here. Yep. He's a zero peripheral guy. So if it's a it's a goal a goals heavy league maybe he's a goal scorer he's going to score some goals probably 35 to 40 ish and then that's going to be it right very you know low on the assists low on all peripherals so I'm I'm not I love the guy I love he's a Canuck yeah, but amazing just fantasy wise he's not actually that great unless it's just like if your league is goals and assists then I'm for it but Yep, I think he's going to get more opportunity this year. Uh, I mean, I've had lots of conversations about Big Kuzi, so mm-hmm. it's he's going to regress. There's no question there. You can't shoot 27%, my guy. We don't do that, all right? It's it's not normal, all right? But he's got a beautiful head of hair. We know this. Um, yeah, but, uh, you know, that's that's reasonable. 111, pick 111 for Kuzi. Sure, okay. I mean, I wouldn't do it. I'm not going to be doing that at 111 no. there. But, yeah, to me, the big values here, um, you mentioned a lot of them, but I, I like Evander Kane. Evander Kane at 101. 
sheesh, this guy is an even strength warrior. Like I projected him for you know, 64 points or 65 points with minimal power play time with like five power play points or something, you know, so yeah. he's getting it done at even strength. So if he gets even just a sniff of power play one there, um, you know, I, he's going to like he had zero power play goals last year. Zero. That's not going to happen again. Right. This this guy, he, he's he, he checks all the boxes. So chance generation, shot generation, right. Hits shots like this guy's nuts so uh, i'm a big fan of evander kane round nine in a points league that that's still value to me in a cats league you're drafting him much higher i could see him going round five um you know round five round six evander kane in a category league like maybe earlier like this guy's a he's a beefer he does that so mm -hmm. i'm a big fan of evander kane um to me the reach yeah uh tyson berry what the hell is he even doing here this makes no sense um like <laughs> he's a great he, he might get 40 points but 40 point defenseman maybe in round nine no that makes no sense no, there's um, no so need for him there's no, no need for him in fantasy yeah yeah thank you for your service my man actually tyson berry sounds like he's like one of the most well-liked guys in the league like everybody loves tyson berry his uh his wedding there's like just a who's who of like nhl superstars there like i've, cool. I've read a lot of reports about tyson berry just what a beauty he is and i've seen some interviews so i like the guy a lot I just, yeah, for fantasy, no thank you. Um, all right, let's round it out. Uh, round 10, we have done it. We're getting there. All right. First pick around 10, Martin Natchez. Then goes Seth Jones, Alex Petrangelo, Hampus Lindholm, Aaron Ekblad, Drew Doughty. We got a little D-run going here. Sam Reinhart, Luke Hughes, Justin Falk, uh, Ricard Raquel, Piotr Kochetkov, and Chris Letang. That's your round 10. What are you thinking about this round here, Mike? Uh, I've, it's another round where I'm not taking a ton of these guys myself, just for personal reasons. Uh, I do really like Latang. I think e even if he's second in line on the power play, I think you will see times for sure when they'll use Latang um, and Carlson on the power play together. For sure, we're going to see some of that. It won't be all the time. And he will end up losing some power play time uh it's a question of how much but um he will have some power play time as well so he's just great he's definitely 10th round great there's no question about that to me end of 10th round even if he loses if you cut his power play points in half from from his other years he's still one of the best defensemen so yeah, and the perifs, damn. Yeah, like, exactly, right? Like, even if he loses some points, he doesn't lose value. It's not like Quinn Hughes, where if you take off 15 assists, he's nothing, right? Yep. With Latang, you take off 10, 15 assists, well, he's still got great peripherals, good points, you know, all that stuff. Um, and it's, it's a top six there, right? So um, you can be on the second line, you know, you can be playing with the second line or the first line as a defenseman, and you're always playing with... A hall of famer pretty much all the time so i love him i think luke hughes is a bit high i mean it's exciting because he's one of the hughes and all that in new jersey and all that but uh, he is not going to be a super good value in fantasy it's just i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. he's not he's uh he's too too young and for a defenseman that absolutely is gonna matter he he's a great player um but you can't pace out his his two game career or whatever he's got right yeah. now and <laughs> pretend that's his rates, right? Yeah, like yeah, I love that. Like oh, he's good for eighty two points this year. Like exactly, no. like three hundred and forty hits. And, yeah, yeah. And whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. He's going to be an excellent defenseman, yeah. and in three or four years, he's going to be an absolute beaut. But he's like maybe a last round pick in my mind. You know, if yeah. anything, it'd be fun to have all the Hughes brothers just to have it. Oh, hell yeah. So if someone should do that this year, maybe I'll try. I'm on like a bazillion team. So maybe I'll, I'll yeah. do that as my strategy. Just get brothers. Just get all brothers. You know? <laughs> Braden Shen, Luke Shen, get them in there as well. Um, and my other value guy that I really like here is Raquel, another Pittsburgh guy. Okay. Because, um, you know, now I, I don't mind. He's going to be a top six guy. He's got peripherals. He shoots um hits blah 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 and again i think he's he's a staple in the top six in pittsburgh which is is going to be good again this year 
Yeah. No, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So I think I, we were, we were, we were simpatico for first and then you said Raquel and now, Oh no, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm with you, buddy. Hughes way too high. That's a, that's a big reach here. Like he's behind Dougie Hamilton. That's really the main issue for me. I think if he was like the, the guy there, like, yeah, uh, uh, like I think his fantasy outlook would be great. We could maybe see 50 points out of this kid if Dougie Hamilton wasn't there. But Dougie Hamilton's there. So you're not getting power play one, my man. So I think that's much too high for him. And then Latang, yeah, this is a no-brainer. Latang at 121. Damn. No. Um, yeah, his his ceiling's gonna be capped a little bit. They're gonna, you know, both him and Carlson are gonna get kind of sliced off the top there, but they're still both gonna be great. And Latang brings those periffs. So um just quick on Raquel. Yeah, I think he's gonna be the casualty on power play one there, because I do think they're gonna go with Latang and Carlson for a, a large portion of the year. And you know, something's gotta give, right? Um, Raquel, I think is going to be the one that gets bumped off that power play. And he did have 21 power play points last year, career high for him. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of that goes away. Also his hits last season were ridiculous. I don't even know if that's here to stay. Like he had 141 hits last season. <laughs> what was this man doing? And that's not, that's not crazy for him though. He's always been pretty physical, but it definitely is like him trying to earn a, a top six spot in Pittsburgh and like, look at me coach kind of thing. He had 243 shots too. That's a lot of shots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, th and that's the thing. I just, I think you're right about the power play. He's definitely going to have way less. Um, but even if he loses 10, even 15 power play points, he is that kind of guy. He's he's going to get you a lot of hits, a lot of shots. Like last year, he was uh, in the Experts League. He was the 57th overall player. Yeah, that's sick. And he probably so, got him on the waivers, maybe. Yeah, and I don't think he's going to be the 57th player. But I think, I think he's going to finish in the top 100. So I don't mind him here. I don't think he's going to repeat what he did last year. But I think uh, I'm comfortable with him in the 10th for sure. Yeah, there you go. Definitely in a category league, I would I think we're yeah. in the tenth makes total sense. Even 100%. in the ninth, I would might maybe feel okay with it. 100%. But yeah, points league, no. But that's it. Those are those are the top ten. Those are the the values and reaches that we sort of identified here. And you know, this will be a changing list because yeah, things we're still lots of drafts going, still you know a month away from hockey. But um, one thing we would be remiss if we didn't do is talk about some of the ADP values in the later rounds. And I want to throw this to you, Raj, just about some of the players that you're excited about that Yahoo is getting way wrong. Well, there's definitely a few. Um, I'm looking at your list. I agree with pretty much all that. There's a few guys here who, again, I don't think it's real. Like, um, you know, for example, like Nikolai Ehlers and Patrick Line at 160 overall. Mm -hmm. So you're talking your final pickup essentially right that's actually out of some leagues yeah so i am definitely I, i'm not counting on a 50 goal patrick line but i think he's definitely better than your worst pickup player so like i really think that's a bit crazy but then you look in uh in fan tracks he's going a hundred spots higher so yep. i don't think that's correct on yahoo's part i think it's just some kind of weird statistical anomaly if you will um so i definitely but i do like line a. i think he's got potential for a, a a decent season a good 35 40 goal year um regardless of what's going on um so i think he could be up there one guy who's never getting respect still the 54th ranked player last year is anzi kopitar right nice yeah his uh his draft uh in yahoo his adp is 151 in fan tracks it's 114 and he gave you 54th overall value last year so that's that's pretty good return on yeah. investment again i don't it's it's not even crazy right he had 28 goals 46 assists no crazy shots he's just good not crazy power play points just good reasonable hall of fame steady numbers right so i love the fact that you can get a guy who's probably gonna end up even if he has a, a way worse season he's going to be in the top 100 so i really like kopitar as a third or fourth center again just it, people forget about him yep yeah absolutely like let me tell you some of my some of these guys that i found because i agree with you kopitar's a really good one actually that i didn't put on my list but um in the best ball drafts i've been doing with apples and genos um I've got him on like seven teams because yeah. he falls to me at like 150. 
Yeah. It makes no sense. This guy's top line, top power play. Like, yeah, he's he's lost a step for sure, but he's smart. He's adapted his game. He's his line is working right. Like, um, you know, he plays great with Kempe. Kempe's on the rise. Like, I think um, he's a player that's just getting better. Right, he's in the wheelhouse. So, I, I really like Kopitar and especially that value. Uh, just some guys I identified. And and first off, what you need to do when you go to draft with Yahoo, you need to go in right when your draft starts and put these guys in your queue. All the guys Raj just said, and these guys I'm telling you here, just go put them in your queue because they're way late on Yahoo. So you might forget they're even there, mm -hmm. right? So Huberto for big, big time, he's going oh. at 123. Um, you know, that's ridiculous. 123 on Yahoo, no. Huberto, I've got him for a point per game. I, I've got him from higher than that. I, I projected him for 87 points. So Jonathan Huberto makes no sense at 123. How about Philip Forsberg at one uh, 140? That's egregious. That's erroneous. All right. That's inconceivable. Um, this this guy, that makes no sense. It just because he was injured last season. Uh, Forsberg at 140. No. Um, he's I project him for 71 points with bangs. All right. He does that. Valerie Nachuskin, another one who's a right winger, which is a uh, you know, that's scarce, right? We want to target these guys. He's going at 142. So uh, definitely no. Nachuskin at 142 makes no sense. Um, also, I agree with you on Ehlers. Zach Wierenski is a big one, too. Um, mm -hmm. He was out for most of the season. He's going at 158. I, I projected him for 20 goals. I mean, I'm high on Zach Wierenski. Like, I think he's, you know, in the top six, seven defensemen at, going off the board. Oh, and you're getting him here uh, at Yahoo at 158. Makes no sense whatsoever. And then I think we're both together on these last two. Boone Jenner and Josh Norris at 173. Huh? Yeah. No sense. I mean, tell me about talk to me about Boone Jenner and Josh Norris. Oh, those are two guys I'm definitely all over. Um, I mean, top six in Ottawa is wildly offensive. Um, Norris had a season off, that's why he's fallen, right? Again, you're, you're searching by rank in Yahoo when you're that's what most people tend to do. And so the guys who missed a chunk of time last year fall way off the screen. Even if, like Norris, I think he only played, what, like four or five games maybe. Yeah. So he's got no stats. So I think he's like the 800th ranked player in Yahoo right now. So even if you, if you scroll way ahead, you're not going to see him. So that's crazy. Boone Jenner, I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. If you're in a, if you're in a, 16 round draft you need to have boot jenner in your league he does everything it all doesn't the time make a bit of sense yeah, yeah. i love boon jenner as you know but i mean like especially with this coaching change now i was a little bit concerned with babcock coming in i still thought jenner was going to be one of babcock's guys mm -hmm. but now with babcock out um they've got this other guy in here who was an assistant to larson right so i think that kind of might stabilize things a little bit in terms of deployment i think jenner could maybe have one more season you know before fantilli takes over that uh, top center spot i think he could have one more season where he's playing 19 20 minutes a game just beefing out of control with his hits and blocks and then i think he can get a career high power play points as well i think he only got something like 16 or 15 last year so i think he's gonna smash that I, I got jenner for 60 points uh adp of 173 no my god that that's that's terrible that's insulting all right boone jenner wouldn't have it all right come no, on yahoo that's out of control and i agree with you with forsberg as well um again he's going way higher in fan tracks um someone who's getting zero respect again and had a, a pretty decent overall season is elias lindholm He's at uh, 142 in, in Yahoo. And he, even with his bad down season in Calgary, when, you know, he was suffering because their 100 point guy they brought in Huberto didn't even show up last year. So um, Lindholm still was in the top 100 overall. So with, with Huberto, I think, like, I mean, Huberto is going to make like a 30 or 40 point bounce back. Like yep. guaranteed he could potentially get a hundred points like that's the quality of player he is i don't he has think it he in will him. we know i that. don't think he will but um i mean he's gonna get 40 more points than last year and lindholm is gonna be in on probably 35 of those so yep. it's a whole different situation there um again coaching whole different situation all around um and that's another guy that if you're gonna i would very much consider taking Mackie Weger as my last defenseman. Mm -hmm. um, just because, same thing, you could probably get him as your last pick. Um, and I've, I just feel like Calgary, 
it's going to be so much better this year. I think they're one of the teams that people are going to go, oh, wow, you know, but yep. I think they're going to be so much better. Big time bounce back coming for Calgary. Yeah, I think that's that's a no brainer to me. Get the out with the old in with the new. I think there's some positive vibes going on. And a, a lot of these guys are locked into term, right? They, they got to make it work. So guys like Huberto, Uyghur, um, even Lindholm, like I think he's going later just because of the weird trade rumors and he wants out. But no one's, you know, no one's biting, right? So he's going to show up to camp and he's going to play, right? And this is a guy that has point per game potential. So, yeah, lots of value there on Calgary. Buddy, thank you so much, uh, Mike, for being here and doing this with me. I really appreciate that. Um, just just kind of picking your brain. You need to be in this fantasy hockey space, my man. So I'm going to get uh, Mike on as much as I can. Because look, oh, and look at that beautiful sweater he's wearing. And you can't, if you can't see the video, this man's wearing an Apples and Geno's right. hoodie. What a freaking legend. Oh, my quality God. sweatshirt right here. There, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I've been asking Nate one uh, Nate for one for years. Just just shut me down. He's he's not he's not budging. So that's fine. Uh, yep. And there you go. But uh, buddy, um, while I got you, why don't you uh, give out uh, your socials and whatnot? Let let the listeners know where they can find you if they don't know already and what you're working on currently. Uh, I don't do too much on the socials. I'm on Twitter. It's the Mike Rogerson on uh, Twitter. That's where I do most of my hockey posting stuff. Um, and of course, five hole. Um, we're not doing the main five hole show for this season as it stands, but we do have the five hole taxi squad who've been keeping things running for us. So we've got a few new guys doing a great job. Um, so you can still check them out on the five hole fantasy feed. I've got the uh, fantasy hockey guide I'm personally putting out on the Five Hole channel uh, starting next week, which is a seven-part series um, that I've done for beginners. So fantasy for beginners, because I find like a lot of our shows, Five Hole included, and uh, all, all the good shows are kind of for nerds, right? They're kind of for us who are already involved deeply. So I couldn't even imagine listening to one of our shows having <laughs> never played fantasy before. It just sounds so confusing, right? So I decided to make a little series for, for people just getting started. So they turn, they're they hearing about IPP and, you know, regressing to this and that. And they're like, I don't even understand how to play this game. When really most of it's quite simple, right? It's just a lot of terminology. So, um, so I'm going to start putting that out. It's going to all be on the five hole feed. Um, and then I'll put a link to this, uh, with your permission, good friend, yep, I'll put a link to this, uh, this spreadsheet in the, in the, um, show notes here. It's just a Google doc that you can download. Um, just, it's just a kind of collated from fan tracks and Yahoo, all the important information onto one spreadsheet. So you can kind of, it's good for drafting. You can see, um, and you can sort it by actual value based on stats or by Yahoo order or by fan tracks order. So it's easy to flip through all three. So we'll share that too. Yeah, I love it, buddy. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I love that idea, the uh, beginner's fantasy stuff. I do think about that sometimes when I'm trying to, you know, talk about stuff. Because, yeah, you can really get granular on this stuff. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, we want to bring as much people to this space as possible. So that's going to be a really a valuable piece of work. So definitely we'll be sharing that out, too, once Mike releases that. But uh, definitely check out the 5 Hole Fantasy Hockey feed there on Twitter slash X. Also check out the 5 Hole Fantasy Taxi Squad. They're getting the biz over there. So, yeah. Uh, well worth a listen Mike thanks so much for being here I really appreciate it my man hey thank you and I just I wanted to say too you uh, thank you guys for doing a good job you and Nate and and Apples and Geno's uh, been doing great work it's nice to see you guys teamed up and it's it's one plus two equals four or whatever it's it's better than the sum of the parts it's great it's you guys have been putting out tons of good content as well so it's nice there's a lot of good uh, a lot of good stuff out there I get thanks to listen so as a listener a lot more now. Oh so. yeah, buddy. Yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate that because yeah, we're 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 doing our best. We're crushing it as as much as possible. So I'm excited about the year to come here for Apples and Genos. But that's all we got, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Stay tuned for the next one, and I'll see you around. Celebrate your day. Bye for now. Later. <laughs>